गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल इंग्लिश लिटरेचर टूडे गोइंग टॉक अबाउट अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट नॉवल बाई बैक्सरी सीडवाज दैट इज पाकिस्तानी ब्राइट द नावल इज लेंदी द नावल इज नॉट सो लेंदी नावल इज जस्ट दिस इज द नावल बट देर आर सो मेनी थिंग्स दैट वी हैव टू डिस्कस एंड टू विल टेक टाइम so that's why i uh, want to part this discussion in two videos video 1 and video 2 can you uh, see this book the yeah and this is the back now today we will talk about this book baksu sidwas the pakistani bride and the major aspects like story line characters and these things and in our next video we'll talk about the other thematic and critical aspects of this novel now let's start bafsi or bafsi sidwa is a post modern diasporic feminist writer from pakistan who lives in the us her pen exposes her rightful experience and concern with the indian panorama of social dichotomy and women's oppression In her novels every uh, woman character appears to possess her new identity losing herself in the liberty of the patriarchal whirlpool If it is Zaitun or Carol in Pakistani Bride or it is Santa the Aya in Ice Candy Man We'll talk about the Ice Candy Man later Okay and then we'll find that there is a character who became the um, victim of partisan Santa and the racial hatred and politics and what do we understand from this point that bafsi sidwa's characters are not just the women who suffered under or strangulated by the cord of patriarchal fanaticism they are more than that they at first the very beginning you will find that they suffered they suffered they are oppressed and they had to follow the track designed for them for their male caregivers and finally when they found that this is not the track for them or these tracks are killing their lives they will try to make their own track and here the women character of pafsi siddas is different from other women characters or from other novels who are the women are presented as only as sufferer but bafsi siddas women characters are not only sufferer but they are also uh, they, they find their own ways of emancipation so they are unique in this story we will find two character carol and jaitun and these two character they are the pakistani brides and they are though uh, strangulated the fettered by the patriarchal society uh, in indian context or pakistani context they tried to flee from that they tried to try their best to change their fate even at the cost of their death now come to the story the story line At the beginning of the story, you will find at the Pakistan-Afghanistan border in a remote mountain region named Kohistan, wrapped in bucolic beauty, Qasim, a ten-year-old boy, is found talking with his father about his upcoming marriage with a woman double his age. So the story starts in a very beautiful surrounding. Uh, in the pakistan afghanistan border in a remote mountain kohistan and this mountain region is very be- uh, very beautiful in its bucolic beauty and vivid panorama and there a boy who is just 10 years old my boy is also 10 years old so i can find the similarity here the 10 years old boy is going to marry a 20 years old lady okay and he is very happy 
he is very happy about the prospect about the upcoming prospect of a life that he is going to marry so he will not be considered as a kid anymore he is now a grown up man he will get his own dress and own dignity in the family so he is very happy on that prospect and the marriage is a marriage contract because it is the marriage of treaty and evil bodied girl was owed to more than the loan due so there is a loan on the part of the quasim gave father gave the loan to the girl's father and the girl's father could not gave it back could not give it back so uh, his daughter is going to marry with quasim so this is the treaty now though at first quasim was angry and puzzled as well as his bride they both were angry and they both were puzzled because when uh, the bride first find his groom her groom he she felt that it must be the groom's brother or any other relative and he she could not believe uh, her eyes that this little kid is her husband and quasim started crying bitterly when he found uh, his wife and then uh, his wife just take uh, him in his in her lap and soothes him to sleep so this scene is very funny and very interesting and now but gradually they overcome the hurdle and become proud parents but here the story takes a turn unfortunately all the kids died along with the mother in a smallpox pandemic grief stricken and depressed father quasim shifted from the himalayan landscape to the punjab plains he wants to forget everything and he wants to forget his past life the life of pain and bereavement he came out from the place there he took a job as a bank guard now there is something you have to keep in mind that quasi which from a mountain run and everyone is free there the free mind scape they are free people they don't care for anyone they don't care for any rule they do what they want to do and what they want to think as good and they had special treatment for the women the women are just a secluded part of the society and they are just they are just kept under the will always they are not a topic to be discussed by the other men and eventually in this aspect there is a controversy or conflictual character we will find in quasim and the other public and quasim get entangled in bitter quarrel with the other public because he cannot get mixed with those culture and his culture is totally different from those in the plain and he entangled himself in a murder case of his instinctual arrogance and anger so his instinctual this is very important word this instinctual arrogance and anger will find later in the character of the other mountain people including the character of jaitun's husband they are they are in, in their instinct they are arrogant they are angry and they are too much possessive and they think they are women as just their um, uh, what to say as just their thing they have to do whatever they will order them and this minds uh, this mindset this concept is the key point of this novel at that time communal violence broke up following the independence and partition of india okay i just <laughs> forgot the one thing they take the women as their property and they at any cost they want to keep their property under their supervision and they their women should have been no wise and when jaitun tried to focus on his on her wish her desire and her what she like to be then her life came in, comes into a fatal point okay at that time communal violence broke up following the independence and partition of india and pakistan the country got involved in murder and bloodshed quasim fled to pakistan after the murder case quasim killed a person 
on a coal and then fled to Pakistan. On the train from Jalandhar, he made the refugees. At the border, just before the train reached Lahore, a vicious catastrophe broke out. A troop of revengeful Sikhs stopped the train and ambushed the Muslim. Now the novel is at the backdrop of partition, it is obvious. But uh, the story is woven by the author herself. And you will find this incident that the train is going to Lahore and there the train met the vicious fate by the revengeful Sikhs. You will find the mention of it in history as well as in other novels. Like I want to show you another novel by Khuswan Singh's Train to Pakistan. Here you also find uh, the same scene. The same scene where a train is planned, uh, is arranged to take all the Muslim refugees to, uh, uh, to uh, sorry, Pakistan, Lahore, and then the Sikhs plan to kill them. But Jaggu the Thag, who is accused of its uh, robbery, was in jail but will be released on that particular day and he will take responsibility to rescue them because her lover, her pregnant lover, was in that train. So, uh, Jugga, at the cost of his own life, will save the train from the butcher of from the butchery of the six. Now, in this novel, so this novel and Bapsi Siddhas, this novel, they are taking the same context, but these two novels are different in the modulation of the story plot. Here, that butchery will not be fulfilled at the because of the sacrifice of Jaggu, but here in Bapsis, this novel, the Sikhs will kill all the people, slaughter all the people who are in the train, except a little girl will save herself, and this little girl will be later taken. Now, in the chaos, Kwasim rescued a little girl whose parents were killed. He took her with him and reared her with the help of a childless couple, Nikka and Mariam. Nick and Miriam. He will also meet Nick and Miriam. They uh, are childless, so they will take care of Jaitun. And wh why he is his name Jaitun? Because Jaitun is the name of Awesome's eldest daughter, who was uh, who died due to the disease. Now, what was the disease? I forget. Smallpox pandemic. Yeah, I, I was thinking, but I want to just check it. It was smallpox pandemic. Though Jaitun was admitted to school very soon at Miriam's instructions, she was taken out of school. What should a girl do by going to school? She will be the bride. She have to learn how to take care of the in-laws, how to take care of groom, and how to take care of the other family members and do household chores. So what else? Um, what else will she do in the school? School does not teach them to cook, to wash. To do the household chores, so household chores. So what else she should do? On that point, Miriam insisted, nagged, and finally forced to coerce him to just take the girl from the school. And Miriam started to train her as a bride, a special species. So bride is not any bride is a special species. You have to learn so many. A girl cannot be a girl can be bride. A girl has to be transformed into the bride. Because bride is a special species ready to be subjugated by the male. She has to learn many things that can um, be inconven inconvenient with the male society. That can be helpful for the males. Yet she was free and loved by Miriam and Kwasim. Even at that point she was free and she was loved by Miriam and Kwasim. At the age of 16, her carefree life came to an abrupt end with Kwasim's firm decision to marry her to his kinsman's son in Kahistan. Now the disaster came, the catastrophic turn of her fate. Kwasim, the stubborn, arrogant man's real character now came in front that he promised his kinsman that he will marry this girl to his son. He never think of her daughter, of Jaitun, what Jaitun wants. Is it possible for Jaitun, 
who is uh, just uh, uh, brought, uh, who is just bringing up in this situation in a plane under the care taking of medium and quasi in this carefree life to go there uh, that far mountain range and um, with that um, totally illiterate totally um, savage people and, uh, and in that sense and get mixed with their culture is it possible quasi never thinks about that he thinks that Jaitun is like the another property and he wants to give his property to another person. That is fixed. And on her way to the mountain with Kwasim, before marriage, Jaitun meet another bride, an American woman named Carol, who married a Pakistani man in the US and then moved to Pakistan with him. Now Carol's fate is also entangled with sorrow, pain, suffering, humiliation and depression, breaking of illusion. And accustomed to the subordinate role of women in Asian society, Carol rebelled against the suppression of her husband's misconduct. In Indian society or in any Asian society, husband can beat his wife, can do whatever behavior, just like a maid of the household or in just like nothing. Women has no role in a society. Women can be treated any type by her husband. But this subordinate role of women in this society is totally opposite to the role, free role of women in the native country of Carol. So Carol is not accustomed with this scenario. And Carol rebuilt. And that's why Carol is humiliated by her husband again and again in different terms. When Jaitun met Carol, they both felt a kinship in as a bride in a land where women are considered as a chattel, a property, no matter their social status. Now, after the, after the marriage, Jaitun's illusion of marriage was devastated. She found his husband brute and savage. She fled to save herself from the constant beating and sexual torture of him. The course of the journey was crucial and she had to face severe challenges. Even she was raped by unknown persons on the hill. But she continued his, her journey. And continuous fear of being caught up and her husband with the family members, they are just chasing her. If they get her, they will kill her. And continuous fear of being caught up at the hands of her husband's group haunted her. Finally, she was rescued from a half-dead situation by the army. She got back her life, but she was marked as a failed bride. Now, the ending. Like Ice Candy Man, here also Bhaksu Siddhuva lives as a maid's variegated possibilities of Jaitun's life. That is a good point and that is a, a, just like a short story characteristic. Like a short story where you are given the perfect short story or uh, the short story where the ending is open ending. The readers are allowed to think what can be the next in different and variegated ways. I can think one, you can think one. and. And let, let Carol take care of her. She could hide here, hide her in the States. Or perhaps Asik could propose marriage after a decent interval. Okay. So that was the last sentence that was uh, uttered about Jaitun. Jaitun was rescued by the army and there was a person in army. And his name is Asik. Asik liked her before her marriage. And Asik really cares for Jaitun. So there is a the possibility that Asik will marry her. And there is a possibility that Carol will take her to the states and hide her there to escape anything, any vicious things. And maybe anything happened to her. May Jaitun marry another person. May Jaitun's life take a new turn. Whatever else we are not stated clearly. But there is enough scope for us to think about it. And what more we can expect from a blooming girl whose life was nipped in bud for the whims and interest on her male caretakers? Okay, now we'll take a look at the main characters here. Kwasim obviously is the main character and uh, he's a mountain man from Kohistan and Joytun. We all know about this character. Just take a look and you will go through the notes about characters. I'm not telling in details because they're written here. 
क्वासिम देन जोयतुन निक्का एंड मिरियम द चाइल्डलेस कपल हु टेक केयर ऑफ जैतुन पर्टिकुलरली मिरियम कैरोल द अमेरिकन लेडी हु मैरिड अ पाकिस्तानी सोल्डर एंड ही कैन नॉट एडजस्ट विद दिस ऑर्थोडॉक्स ईस्टर्न कल्चर फारूक फारूक इज कैरोल्स हस्बैंड हु ऑलवेज टॉन्टेड कैरोल फॉर हर फॉरवर्ड एटीट्यूड बट ही मैरिड हर when he married her he did not think that he she cannot adjust in this situation and then he did not criticize but now every time he criticized her and compare her with the uh, orient uh, girls orient women major mustaq major mustaq had a affair uh, affair with carol but carol feel that mustaq is far more mature or forward or modern than farooq but mustaq is the same mustaq is already married he and he has a family he just want an escape because he is feeling lonely far from his family that's why he take a relief with carol that's nothing else see he has no extra feeling for carol but he understand carol misri khan is a kinsman of qasim with whose son he decided to get jaitun married Now there is Saki. Saki is the son of Mr. Khan, the brute, the savage, who used to torture and brutally raped also uh, his wife Jaitun. Asik Hasan. Asik Hasan is John in Major Mustak's army, who was kind-hearted and he liked Jaitun. So these are the primary features of the novel. They are we discuss about the characters, the storyline, and about author. and in our next video we'll discuss the other aspects like the themes of this novel and um, the feministic approach of this novel in this type of critical analysis we'll do in our next video okay bye